All right, we're back on LinkedIn. I'm here with my buddy, Adam. And Adam and I have had some really unique conversations lately about transition. Adam's got a fascinating transition story. He's got a, a, a great blog and podcast where he talks about transition in a very kind of a different way that we've not talked about before on on this po on our posts here. If you've been following along for the folks that are reading along from LinkedIn, um, you're talking about Leo to CEO. And that's a, a little bit different than we've been talking about going into the private sector, getting into corporate security and finding that role working for somebody else. But that's not what kind of, not only did do you talk about that, this is what happened to you. You were, a, a, you worked for the Sheriff's Department and uh, if yep. you can elaborate on that and how that worked out and how that transition happened and the position that you were put in and you, you really had to be innovative and you had to uh, figure this thing out kind of on your own, but uh, it's a fascinating story. I'll let you tell it. Yeah, absolutely. Scott, and first, thanks for having me on the show, um, you know, reciprocating, if you will, after uh, had That's you right. on my podcast, even though that hasn't aired yet, and I'm sure this is going to air before your podcast episode on my show does. But um, I just think it's awesome to make connections like this with people like you. I mean, the, the way that we network through these types of media is is just amazing to me. Uh, you know, and I, the I think I'm 18 episodes in on my podcast now, so it's still relatively green and new. And yet I've had the opportunity to network and connect with so many people that are like-minded in this, in, especially in this concept about what it looks like to transition out of law enforcement. And so it's good to connect with you and thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so like you said, I, I, I left my law enforcement career, um, would have been uh, two and a half years ago now. And I, I actually formally retired. Uh, I, I have an ID card to prove it. <laughs> and uh, I retired as undersheriff. So I was second in command, you know, the sheriff's office, but I was a politically appointed position. And so when I took that position, you know, I knew that there was, there was risk associated with that. There's, there's not that same sense of, uh, you know, I can weather the changes of a political atmosphere. Um, but, you know, I felt like that was what I was being called to do when I was asked to take that position. Um, I've always enjoyed leadership. Uh, it was, it's always something that's, that's motivated me and excited me and um, teaching and coaching and that sort of thing. And so it was really a good fit. Um, ultimately, you know, after spending several years uh, as under sheriff, my, my sheriff uh, went to uh, uh, run again for, for elected office. And we ended up having a contender on the same ticket. And so we had a contested primary and uh. in that contested primary, and this is, I'm just, I'm sharing my opinions here because I'm sure the opposite side would have different opinions, but ultimately bygones are bygones. But, um, I was blindsided by the results of that, which were that our contender actually won the primary. Um, and, and in hindsight, looking back and with all the communication I've had since then of people asking me if I was going to run for sheriff, um, this next go around, uh, I feel like things, I think, I think people became complacent and thought, you know what, it's the primary. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we had a good reputation. We were, we were kicking butt and taking names, man. And, um, had a good reputation for things, but it just voters got complacent and, uh, uh, I got surprised and I went, Oh crap. Now I've got, uh, six months to figure out what's next. And mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that cops that will transition out of law enforcement and go into private security jobs, uh, or become instructors for private companies, uh, that sort of thing. And I'm not knocking that by any means. I mean, there's, um, several people I work with that do exactly that. And there's some great companies out there that just wasn't for me, man. I mean, I got to a point where, um, you know, I'd worked for the man for so long and, um, you know, I had a taste of freedom being sort of in a CEO position, uh, as the undersheriff. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to go work for anybody anymore. Like, I, I just want to do my own thing. And I think entrepreneurship is really, it's the backbone of America. And, uh, you know, I, I made this decision that, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to go take another job. Although I got offered some great jobs. Uh, I was on the Marshall's task force for several years and, and had some opportunities there and some other places, you know, which at one time was my dream job. 
and uh, and yet I just I decided entrepreneurship is where I wanted to go. I wanted to work for myself, live where I wanted to, work when I wanted to, spend more time with my family that I lost out on all those years working 60, 70 hours a week. Yeah. And so you had a little bit of time to to kind of organize yourself, but you had you been planning to do anything? Did you have any, have any side hustles or side gigs going on through your law enforcement career? Um, had you always thought like, when I leave law enforcement, I'm going to be ready and this is, everything is lined up and, and you just flip the switch or did you have, have uh, to kind of figure it out? You know, a, a, definitely a combination of the two. I would say it was probably, um, you know, uh, two thirds figuring it out, one third uh, plan. Right. So, and what I mean by that, like I had a side hustle, if you will. So okay, I actually back many eons ago when I was in, in high school, I, I started learning how to uh, write code and build websites and stuff. And I, I, I just had a blast doing that as a kid and um, lost my, my passion or hobby for that when I was in my law enforcement career. But in the last several years of my law enforcement career, I started to get back into it and started doing web design again. And it was a fun hobby for me. And some people started to take recognition that I could do that and started hiring me to do some gigs. And so I was kind of side hustling a little bit, doing website design for some people. And, um, but that actually wasn't what I thought I was going to go into. Like, so okay. one of the things that I, one of the things I loved the most when I was in my law enforcement career was interview and interrogation. And I was a certified uh, CVSA examiner, a voice stress analyzer. And my plan was to actually start a consulting business doing CVSA exams for attorneys. And I did that uh, right out of the gate. I, that's what I started doing. But I found myself driving all over Timbuktu all the time to go, you know, to attorney's offices. And, uh, you know, there's just a bunch of headache and hassle. And it felt like it wasn't freeing like I thought it was. And in the meantime, the demand that people were asking me to help them out with marketing and website stuff started to increase. And I, I ultimately realized I could make more money doing that than I could doing this consulting work. And it was far less impact on me. I, I don't have to, most of the time I work from home. Uh, I set my own hours. I can work in the middle of the night if I want to. I can, you know, whatever I want to do. And so ultimately there just came a point of reckoning like six months in where I was like, you know what? I got to kill that business and I'm just going to go all in over here. And even that has been a, a, a major evolution and a lot of, a lot of lessons learned both good and bad in the process of that. Well, and, and I think that's the, the message that I want to leave our viewers with is that um, to, to stay involved in something that may be uh, a little different than your law enforcement career and hobbies are great ways to do that. And if you can find that you're doing something that, that you really enjoy um, that isn't law enforcement when you don't have that opportunity anymore, then I think that's a great way to pivot. You took something that you really enjoyed doing and you have pivoted that off and now and, and you're, you're doing a lot uh, of great things with it. And uh, if we could get more folks to be thinking about entrepreneurship, um, is there one thing before we, we run out of time here, LinkedIn keeps us 10 minutes. Is there one uh, key thing that, that you would say for people to be thinking about uh, in regards to entrepreneurship? You know, I, I would say the one, I'll, I'll, I'll even say this was a mistake that I made that, that I would, and, and I try to encourage people to do uh, for my podcast when we're talking about this very thing is that, and it's kind of a dorky thing and everybody's going to roll their eyes and be like, I don't want to do that. But seriously, I'm telling you, whether you have any intention of actually starting a business or not, or even leaving your law enforcement career, have an idea and put that idea into some form of writing. I'm going to call it a business plan, but it doesn't have to be even that formal, but put something down that says, here's kind of like, it's a file that you can store away and say, this is what I'm going to pull out when I have to execute this plan you know, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to make it succeed. I wish I had done that because had I done that in advance of leaving my law enforcement career and having to make that decision, I feel like maybe I would have recognized sooner rather than later that that initial business plan I had wasn't really going to be 
uh, the, the ideal scenario for me. And maybe I would have eliminated that wasted six months that I spent on that business before going into what I'm doing now full time. And so it just, just have, have a file on backup, just put something in writing, write it down. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to accomplish it. This is how I'm going to fund it. This is who I'm going to, who my target audience is going to be. And this is generally how much I'm going to charge for it. Like just, just write those things down. I love it. And stay tuned for more information from Adam. We'll have this conversation. Keep it going.